April 23rd through 25th was Ludum Dare 48, a 40 hour game jam. Now if you don't know what a game jam is, a TLDR is at the start of the event, a theme is announced, and from that point on you get, you guessed it, 48 hours to make a game from scratch incorporating that theme. This Ludum Dare's theme was deeper and deeper. Now I've made games in the past for Ludum Dare, but honestly the Ludum Dare is the only time I make my own original games, so I don't really call myself a game dev. But if you've been following my content till now, over the past year, I've been recreating games using unconventional game engines, from Minesweeper in both Discord and Minecraft to Battleship on Twitter. I've enjoyed making these games with these rather arbitrary and somewhat pointless constraints, so why not bring this to my Lum Dare game? What constraints did I put myself for this Lum Dare? Well, if you haven't already read the title, I'll be making my game using only HTML and CSS, no JavaScript or any other scripting allowed, so let's see how I did. Once the theme was released, I started to plan out and determine my game. At this point, I hadn't yet decided to commit to the HTML and CSS only idea and had a few other ideas floating about. Soon I had narrowed it down to HTML and CSS or making a game using Markdown on the Lim Dare site. As you know though, I did end up choosing the HTML and CSS route. Now it was time to get planning the actual game's content. A quick sketching session was in order where I decided on the idea of using pipes as a mechanism to navigate deeper into a web page. With my top notch drawings complete, I started working on actually implementing my first pipe. For the puzzle board, I took the web page and split it into one big grid, 21 columns wide with as many rows as I need. For the rows though, they were alternated between 20 VH tall rows and 200 VH tall rows with the former being the layer junction where the pipes would exit and the user could then click on other pipes to travel them and go between layers. The later was an in-between layer where the pipes were there to travel. The reason why the second layer is so much bigger is so that multiple layers can't be seen at the same time. After some initial HTML and CSS setup, we have a green pipe. But wait, what happens when I click the top of the pipe? Drumroll please! We go to the other end. Okay, okay, now I hear you asking, how did you do that when you can't use JavaScript to handle the on-click or make the page auto-scroll? Well, my friend, to that I say browser and CSS magic to the rescue. See, browsers and HTML support the concept of anchors and will automatically scroll to them when included in the URL, which is this thing after the pound symbol. And in HTML, these anchors correspond to the tag's IDs. So if you include layer two after the pound symbol of the URL, the page will automatically scroll so that the corresponding element with the ID layer two is in view on the page. By default, this happens automatically, but there's a handy little CSS property called scroll behavior. And if we set that to smooth, the page will now smoothly scroll to the anchor point. Cool, huh? Anyways, now that we have this really bland looking green pipe, but don't you worry, because with the power of CSS gradient magic, we now have a much flashier looking pipe. And bonus, we also have a blue variation. And with that and some intro text, level 1 is now done. And legitimately the core concept of my game as well is done. So time to pack it up and ship it, right? Now it's time to make more levels and add more features to the game so it's not just the same thing over and over again. For level 2, I experimented with more layers, additional pipe colors, and a curving pipe that goes down to start before doing a 180 and going back up. Basically, another easy level for me to get a better bearing if I wanted to write my code, as well as for the eventual player to get a better feel of the gameplay. Once I was satisfied with this level and had refactored my code, it was time to move on to the third level. Like the previous two, I played around with the pipe positions and layers and continued to refactor my code. This was a very reoccurring thing as each level helped me realize the things I was doing a lot of and making me think of better ways to streamline the process. Essentially I was just getting better at writing HTML and CSS code. For level 3 though, I added a new challenge, a text input preventing the player from clicking the text to take him to the next level. For this level, the text to unlock this was a code found in another layer. That when inputted into this text box, replaces the input with a text to go to the next level. To accomplish this, I created an input with the pattern and required attributes set on it. The pattern attribute specifies what types of inputs are valid for this input. When the user enters a valid input into this, the input then gains a new selector, colon valid. This can be used to toggle CSS to display the following link and hide the input tag. The required attribute simply makes it so that nothing entered into the input isn't marked as valid. So TLDR, users insert text into the input. Once the input matches the specified pattern, it gains a valid selector. The CSS then uses this valid selector to hide the input and show the next level text. 
Level 4 was basically a rehash of this but with more layers and pipes as well as a riddle that essentially everyone had trouble with, not only because my idea of it being a riddle wasn't very well communicated, but also because some people said that a tiger isn't strictly orange, but either way this level just doesn't deserve much discussion at all. Level 5 though brought a new concept of levers. Now you might see this as a cute little animated lever and think, nice, that's some solid CSS animating, bet you whipped that up in like 50 minutes, and to that I say, I wish. See, I spent like a solid 2 hours in this checkbox lever alone. Oh yeah, in case you didn't already figure it out, this is just a fancy style checkbox. But oh my, I have a new respect for people who make these large elaborate animations because this was so annoying. Not to get the shape of it, but to get all of the parts to animate correctly and look correct while they are animating. I could probably make a whole video on this alone. Anyways, I digress. But only sort of. Because now that I have these cool looking animated checkboxes, I now have a new problem. How in the world do I get these to hook up to the next level text correctly? Obviously I'm going to use the checked selector in the same way I use the valid selector on the inputs, but the input tag was placed right next to the text link tag. These checkboxes are going to be nowhere near the link tag, so how in the world do I get the CSS to interact with them when they are in completely unrelated locations? Well, by faking it of course. See, I'm using a grid display as the main driving force behind all of this, and a grid display gives me the ability to assign tags to certain cells in the grid no matter what order the tags are in, in the actual HTML DOM. Because of this, I'm able to chain all the levers one after the other, along with the next level text while still making them show up on the page in the correct layers, which are nowhere near each other. Then, using more CSS selector trickery, I can now chain together the check selectors to only show the next level text when all of the layers, or checkboxes, have been checked. As I show off in the later level 8 though, I can also change it up to allow any combination of checked and not checked levers. The same chaining technique was also used again in level 7, but for the inputs to make them show up one at a time for the user to input the math questions in order. And although that about covers it, there are some other small details like text and levers only showing when the user is on the corresponding layer so that way you can't do a sort of drive by and see the codes, as well as the nested grid to make the curve pipes work, but honestly I could go on forever with all the small details about how this game works. So with that I will wrap up this video here, the game, Lumdare page, and source code can all be found in the description below, hopefully you guys enjoyed my game and challenge and also the video. Thank you guys for watching, I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.